privileged one. Uh, Rabir Saab, this is privilege and honor to have you as This is the second time, last time I had the fortune of seeing you in Leicester. And uh, I commend your work and your family, and indeed in your children I've seen the real pedigree, and indeed I see the real training and, and tarbiyah that you have given. Uh, uh, to correct you that I wasn't a political advisor, I was a minority faith advisor, and uh, my specializing in contextualizing as religion as a minority. Uh, I think Jack, who met me in my previous role as a, as a government uh, employee, I'm very pleased that I'm liberated so I can, I can talk my mind. I think, uh, Lord Bishop, the example you give us, and I think uh, Raheem, you mentioned about actualizing the interfaith rather than talking interfaith. In my days, uh, the most difficult task was to getting Imam and Rabbis and under one roof, and which, uh, with thank to the Lord, with the help of my colleague and the Board of Deputies, Chief Rabbis, Archbishop of Canterbury, and other colleagues, we did that. And uh, it took me about 19 months to come to that fruition. Having a 50 Imam and 50 Rabbi under one roof, <coughs> believe me, there was no sweat and there was no blood uh, in, in that. However, what we had to do, that we had to park Israel and Palestine issue, we talk about the difficult scriptural uh, verses which allegedly normally say that it is anti-Semitic or anti <coughs> So issue is this, that at the grassroots, how do you do it? And we, I live in Leicester and I'm fortunate that we have uh, uh, benefited from at Wingate, your predecessor work, and now we have a John Hall yeah. who's working at uh, St. Philip Center. I think the issue for us in, 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 as a Muslim in, in, as a minority we need to think, the word I think, uh, Jack, you mentioned uh, is, is not having a superiority of one religion or proselytizing each other, it is having a respect for each other. Um, and the colleague sitting, uh, Rana Khan, a uh, reverend sitting here, and we when working together, that we do not demonize each other. It is important that we respect and honor the religion. And I think uh, taking uh, Dr. Zad Khan, your work about Muslim, what we need to do. I'm just going to, within my two minutes, I'm not a politician and I will not be a politician, I promise. <laughs> 1582, there was a job advert for Imam in, in Egypt. And seven qualifications, and I can remember, uh, please stop, I can remember five qualifications. Number one, that Imam has to have authority of Islam. He has to have authority and master in contemporary religion, in bracket, Judaism and Christianity. Mm. Number three, he must be a wonderful orator. And the word is used that he must be mughani, mm. that his voice should be able like a singer. <coughs> and he should be well dressed and well presentable. <laughs> and indeed, he should be a role model. I would leave this question for Dr. Zadju Khan and Malana sitting on my left hand side that are we presenting that quality of Imam? We don't know Islam, let alone knowing, let alone knowing the other faith. So our duty is, I think, uh, my ma last master was contextualizing Islam for faith in, in the UK. How do we live and how do we conduct? Uh, as far as the capacity within the Muslim community, I am the first one to scream within the government that we need to build capacity within the faith communities, all faith communities, although indeed within the Muslim communities. Established church, as well as the Judaism in the UK, has not been me at all. They've been very generous to offer those help. So less work in partnership. The word is a partnership. And let's work together. Let me congratulate Peter of yourself and Mankind Trust for holding such event where we can openly talk and establish a dialogue. Dialogue is the way forward. And there's always myth and fear of unknown. We need to demolish those walls of ignorance. Bumale Naimapala. Welcome to you.